G'day guys, in this video I'm just going to go over upgrading the PTFE tubing inside of the CFS and the K2. Um, I'm going to be using TH3D's Tough Tube Reverse Bowden and um, obviously you want a tube cutter and um, a 2.5mm hex key and just a little screwdriver. So I did this upgrade once before um, just using standard Capricorn tubing and a few people pointed out it's probably not the best tube to use just because the um, smaller inside diameter which is only 1.9 millimeters. Um, this reverse Bowden stuff from TH3D is um, the same outside diameter which is 4 millimeters, so it's the same but the inside diameter is 2.5 millimeters, which is basically the same as what's in the CFS um, so this is sold as basically a direct um, upgrade or replacement for um, the AMS and the CFS and stuff. So this tube's much better for this application. Uh, this stuff's basically very much the same as Capricorn, has very similar properties. So um, in the end it should give you a nice feed and retract. And um, yeah, so and it, it should last longer as well than the original white stuff. So let's get into it. On the CFS, we're going to be taking out this screw, this screw, this one, and this one. So the four across the top here, and then that one there, that one there, and that one there. Um, these are different sizes. So there's two long ones and a short one here, and then all four of these are the same sizes. So the best way I've found to do this, honestly, is just put it on its side. And then that way you can sort of let the lid open behind it and then you can just start undoing these ones. Alright, that helps if you've got a magnetic screwdriver just to get the little screws out. But if it doesn't, like this one, then um, just sort of tilt it and they'll come out. Now the piece on the inside here. This piece here. Is going to be loose, so just be careful with it as you're moving stuff around. That's why it's probably best to put it on its side like this. And now just take out these ones. So now we can just dislodge this. And then just push the um, buttons in and remove the tubes. And just push that back in there. for the time being and now we spin it around so now this section here will come out so you just grab on that and pull it don't pull it all the way out because there's a plug on the bottom and now you'll see there's a little plug here and um, there's a little rubber boot on it so you just want to pull the rubber boot back just slide it down like that in there there's a little white plug with a little clip on top so just push it down on the clip and pull it out and then you can remove this section and at that point you've got the um, part that you need out anyway now along here there's four little rubber boots so you just want to pull those out you can get them with your fingernails but if you can't just use a screwdriver to lift it up and now you just use a screwdriver and push down next to it, it's the same as when you're releasing any other tube you just push down next to them and you'll be able to pull the tubes out so now um, just keep in mind that the two outer tubes on the outer edges of this they're longer than the two inner tubes so you'll see that the um, tubes are slightly different lengths so pay attention to that um, when you go to cut them it's fairly easy all you really need to do is just get your tube and just measure it. it doesn't have to be perfect but you just get it sort of right like that and then just use your tube cutter like that And there we go, we've got two long tubes, two short tubes. Just straighten them a little bit so I can poke them back through the hole. Yeah. 
Now before you put these in, um, I suggest you just blow through them, just in case there's any um, of their PTFE sort of grains, dust, whatever inside of it, because if that gets into your nozzle, it's going to block it, because it won't melt. So just blow through them, make sure there's nothing in them before you put them in. Okay, so now they're ready to go in, so got too long, too short. Long on the outside. Fairly simple. And now just stick your little rubber boots back in. And these can be a little bit tricky to get in. Um, so you can just use a screwdriver and push on the edges to get them in. Just be careful not to, um, to push a hole through it because you don't want to push holes and things. So. Okay, you just go through, make sure they're all flat. Too easy. So now that's ready to go back into the CFS. So putting this back in is much like taking it out. You just want to feed these through the little holes in the bottom to get them out. And then um, we'll get it in there. So obviously it's going to be hard to see on the camera, but Okay, they're all through. So now you just want to plug in this plug again. It's a little bit tricky this one. But you'll get it in, just go easy. Make sure it's plugged in properly because you don't want it coming out, you know, while it's printing. You just push on the sides, it should be locked in. Then just put your little rubber boot back on. Keep everything nice and sealed, like that, and then push it in, just like that, and then it's back in. So now you can come around on this side, hold it nice and tight, and whack a screw in. Now, of course, um, don't over tighten these, but you do want to have them. Um, under a bit of tension because there's a rubber gasket on the bottom of the piece that we just had out so to make sure it maintains a good seal just make sure there's enough tension on it so it seals nicely then we just pull this out again we poke the tubes in there Nicely in like that, and then just push that back in. Maybe just double check that the cables are good because there are little cables down there, so just make sure they're not getting bound up just in case. Push that in. There you go, now whack some screws in this. Now that's in, you just got to clip these tubes in. The best way I've found to do this. Just use a bit of your old tube and slide it like that. And there you go, they're all in. It'll settle down once the tubes sort of bend and do their thing. And there you go. So that's the tubing upgraded in the CFS and it all back together so now we'll move on to the printer all right and the printer is super easy there's not really much to this you've just got a little clip on the back here you pull a little plastic clip out and you just pop the little rubbery whatever you want to call it fitting off and then you just pull the tube out and then you've got one on here as well and you just push that and slide it off and just feed the tube off. Pull the front cover off of the printer and just push down. So now you've got that simple as the exact same thing as before. Just get your tube and then just measure it. And then just 
cut up the cutter. And then again, like before, just blow through it. Make sure there's nothing in it. Get your little um, one with the rings on it, and just push that in on the bottom. It's easier to go up like this through that way. Just feed it through the top here. The top one. You don't really need a video for this. You can work all of this out fairly good. Push that down there. Put the cover back on. And then just push it through the back here. And get your little fitting again. Push it on the end. Put the clip on. Then pull that back. So it's nice, and then slide this one up, and then that way there's no movement, and then put your clip on the inside one, and that'll stop the tube moving. So you connect your CFS there, and everything's nice and good. You can give that a bit of a bend if you want, but it should be right. And there you go, that's the printer done. And there you go for reference, there's the back of the printer with the tubes all through it. Um, I'll whack the link to this stuff in the video description and um, yeah, this should last longer and just perform better than the original white stuff um, And yeah, so it's well worth the upgrade. I think this stuff's not too expensive. So yeah Hopefully it'll um, make things run nicer for you Anyway, I hope that helps <laughs>